Ahoy hoy, I'm Pavo. And I'm Neil. And welcome to That's No Moon. It's a podcast. So here we go. Right, first of all, because right. it's serious business, we are actually facing each other, which we don't normally do. We don't normally do. And we will say from the outset that we are going to talk spoilers right, I, I would say right from the start. So if you haven't, if you're one of the people in the whole world that hasn't seen The Force Awakens. And there are a The few. Force Awakens. <laughs> the Last Jedi. <laughs> the Last Jedi. We will be talking major spoilers. Yeah. Now, first of all, how many times, we are now, we're recording this on the Tuesday. The I've, movie I've came only out. seen it once. You've seen it the once, right? Yeah. I've seen it three times so far. Right. That's my, that was going to be my first question, because obviously I knew, know that you've seen it three times. Yeah. How did they hold up each time? Okay, the first time I came out of the movie, and if you go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash pods, you'll see the reaction video I did when I came out. And one of the sweetest or weirdest things was Mac from LA messaged me afterwards and said, man, you look so disappointed. And I wasn't disappointed. I just didn't know how to feel. Right. When I watched it that very first time, it was, um, okay. it was very strange that I didn't come out feeling, Oh my God, what a movie that was like I did with the force awakens. And with the fact that it just like, it caught me emotionally at the very end. And I thought about the movie all day on the Thursday and uh, obviously did that reaction. So that was my raw reaction from coming out. And reading other people's reviews, it seems like a lot of people had that same feeling that they came out of it. And like, I think it was the fact that there were a lot of things, which we will cover over the next half hour or so, that I wasn't expecting. And there were a lot of things in there that I didn't think was going to go the way it went. Mm. And there were also a lot of a, a couple of things in there that were real what the fuck moments. Yeah, as right. in, did they just do that? And why did they just do that? Mm. When I went and saw it on the Friday, so I'd had a good day, two days to, to process, to, to process it, yeah. it and think about it myself. So much more emotional. So much more. The, mm. the, the scenes between Leia and Luke... Um, my wife turned to me because she thought I'd fallen asleep, but I wasn't, I was stifling tears. Oh, really? It got to me so, that, that much. It's just a, for me, it's a really sweet scene because of the stuff with Carrie Fisher as well. You know, I don't know. It was just that bit when he kisses her on the forehead, gives her the, the, the golden dice. Uh, And even when he goes and puts his hand on three PO, that was the bit. And then when I went and saw it again, um, on the Sunday, so I had another couple of days just to sort of go through it. I felt just as, just the same. I, st- I I didn't cry, but I I teared up and felt very emotional in that same bit. The bits that didn't work for me still didn't work for right. me. Specifically the the Mary Poppins layer bit. Yeah, that's the bit that I think it doesn't matter how many times I see the movie. That's the bit that I'm never gonna quite. It's not going to quite stick with me. No, it did look a little bit out of place. I will give it that. I mean, to give it some defence, I mean, it's the first time we've seen her use the Force, isn't it? Yeah, and I can understand. I can understand it from that point of view. But the aesthetics, thinking, the look of it, it wasn't great. Well, and it's also it did. The, the, she's never used the Force that way before. No. So there's not like even an inkling. Okay, she's sensed things when people have died and stuff like that. She's sensed it. And if you think about it in, in, in it's just, she's never used the force. No, no, it's not no. like she's even like, can't be asked to get up and get a fork from her. So she'll go and uh, reach her hand out. And then all of a sudden she's able to, but it also means, does that mean that she's immortal? Because if you're sucked out into space. You're sucked out into space. And you, you die automatically, surely, yeah. because you haven't got any air. So she is floating around in space for a good couple of minutes then wakes up, then uses the force. It's not like she's in a bubble yeah. or she's in like an outer part of the ship that has been... Thinking about it afterwards, I thought, wouldn't it have been a courageous move to have killed her then? Yeah. And... I No, that's what I actually thought they were going to do. And I think when they turned around and said, I mean, that they weren't going to kill her off in this movie or that wasn't the, the thing. And then I think... Part of me thinks, did they change heart a little bit on that scene? Did it? I mean, I need to watch it again, but it was the one bit that I just thought, ooh, that's almost comical, comical um, watching that. I mean, just 
dragging herself back through space, wasn't it? It's, it's almost like she was magnet to go and back in, and yeah, it's it's the one bit that still doesn't still doesn't sort of sit right with me. Now, before we go into the the details of the movie, um, so how many? Let, let's just quickly ask you a question first. So the first time you saw it, you you gave it four toes up. I you? did, yeah. See, I'm gonna give it. I've only seen it once, and I, I'm gonna actually go high and four point five. Right. Toes up. Yeah. Because I came out of it. I'm just going to say I was buzzed by it. I absolutely loved it. It didn't feel like two and a half hours to me. It flew right, by. Right. I enjoyed every single moment of it. I enjoyed the freshness, the change. Um, and I just, I really just, oh, I just, I loved it. I didn't mind any of it. I, the only bit that after retrospect that was that bit, and there's a couple of other little bits that probably were a bit, mm, but nothing major. Okay, I just really enjoyed it. I loved the the what Ryan Johnson brought to it—the visuals, the effects. I, I've read people moaning about the laughter. Why not have laughter? It's a family film. Yeah, it's a film. We've got all said and done. We've got to remember these films are ideally for kids. They're children's films. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't agree with that. I, w- I wouldn't you know, agree with that. Well, no, not, right, not family not, films. That, I don't even think that that's the case it, now. Do you not? I've, no, I think these are made for 40 f- people that are fans of the original trilogy. You see, I, I would disagree. I still think that, they're made with a family at, yeah, at heart. Yeah, but they're, they're doing that to bring people like you and me that are then going to yeah. bring their kids to exactly. go and see it. But I don't think I I don't think I mean they've always been had, had dark tones. All yeah, of the movies yeah, have had dark yeah. tones, and they've also always had comedic moments. Exactly. I don't think I mean to me none of the comedy seemed out of place. No, it wasn't. I mean, it was funny, but yeah, it wasn't like tacked in, was it? It was I all didn't, part of it. I, I didn't think so. No, look, like I, I was going right, to say. I was going to say in regards to this, it has to be one of if not the most divisive Star Wars film, probably more than Phantom Menace, by the, by the is, way that yeah. the internet has reacted to it. Well, critically, it's done very well. Yeah. It, reviews from the, the everyday public are very mixed. Aren't very they? mixed. And there are a lot of people that, I mean, again, I, I did a YouTube video this morning. Which I saw on my Yeah, because trip, I, yeah. I, got, I got to work and was just checking the, the movie news as I do, and some... Some guy has done a petition to Disney to get The Last Jedi taken out of Star Wars canon. Now, as I said in my... I was only a little four or five minute yeah. rant, but I wanted to say something because I just felt... it's I, Everybody has their opinion and everybody is due their own opinion and you have to respect whatever their opinion is. Mm. Everybody, I'm assuming, loves Star Wars that has gone to see Star Wars or at least likes it. And if you don't like the movie, that's fine. Don't go. Th- then, then don't go and see yeah. it again. Yeah. That's fine. And you can quite rightly make a video, do a podcast, put it up on Facebook or, or Twitter and say that you don't like the movie because of this, this, this and this. Yeah. It's totally your right and everybody should respect whatever your view is. As a Star Wars lover myself, I want everybody to love every Star Wars movie. Of course you will. And if I see people that are writing, um, our, our friend Steve Skinley put yeah. out there that he didn't like it. Uh, my brother said that he didn't like it. Right. And <coughs> what it does is it makes me think, but I really want you to like it. Yeah, yeah. And as much as you try and give them reasons, I don't want to change their mind. I would just want them to like it. It's yeah, not yeah. up to me to to make anybody or, or disrespect anybody's opinion. It just, I think, because, and, and as you love Star Wars as well, I mean, that's why we do a Star Wars mm. show and you know, we're surrounded by Star Wars stuff. I want Star Wars to be for everybody and I want everybody to love every minute of every movie. It's That's not possible. Because it's never no, going to happen. No, because nobody loves everything of everybody's. But it was, it's just really strange seeing the just the downright hate that, that mm. people are having and saying that um I mean this guy that did the thing said that they should delay episode nine, remake episode eight, um, because then it needs to fit better in the whole Star you know, Skywalker saga. Now what I find wrong is the fact that that guy, if he had his way now, will take 
that movie away from me. Yeah. He doesn't have the respect for me because he wants to change it for and and what precedent would that set that then anybody doesn't like a certain movie they mm. start a, 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 a I hate this whole thing of starting petitions up for stupid things like this. There's people with too much time on their hands. I mean I suppose it's it? it's a way, it's that him showing his point but just put a put a post on YouTube or put a yeah. post on Twitter say why you don't like the movie and that's fine. Not everybody is going to love the movie. No. They? They're not going to love it. And not I totally everybody respect loves that. every movie. No. I mean Look at me. My worst film is Titanic. Yeah. And everybody seems to love it, and I don't get why. No. But I would never take that away from them. If they want to love it and they want to sit there and watch it, so be it. Do you think, though, that people have, and I'm with the public, are turned against it? Is because they had ideas that they think were going to happen, and they've totally swiveled them on their heads. So, for instance, Ray's parents. Everybody was summarising what they think or who they think Ray's parents is, and we just find out they're nobodies. Right, yeah, but see, I don't think that's the case. Right. I hope it is. I don't think that's I mean, The one thing that struck me is that whole scene um, when Ray went down the dark side yeah. hole or whatever it was, was very reminiscent of Luke going into that tree in The Empire Strikes Back. Absolutely. Down to the point that the reveal at the end was their own face. Yeah. So when Luke was facing Vader and he he kills Vader, the the helmet explodes and it was Luke's face. So when that exact thing happened, Ray goes to look and he, she thinks she's going to see who her parents are and it's her face. Yeah. So that to me was very telling, but I think and especially when Kylo Ren said to her, you know, I saw, I saw your parents. They they were nobodies. They were just like junkers that s- sold you for drink money. Yeah. I don't. I think he's saying that to her to make her feel worthless, yeah. so that she will come to the dark side with him. She knows he knows that she's really powerful. Yeah, and she can't just be powerful off her own back. There has to be, well, I, I think, mean, some kind of lineage there. But then Anakin didn't have any sort of, <laughs> did he? But then and he the, was supposed to be the chosen one, wasn't he? Yeah. I, you can't think that, that that somebody is second coming. So, well, some, yeah, exactly. It's, it's somebody is popping out virgin births every yeah. every well, thirty all years. What I'm thinking is, if that was the case, and that I haven't got an I haven't got an issue if it is. I really haven't. What if she's got no no no? Because, I'm, I'm because the same. To be fair, if if she hasn't. You know, if if she had, and it was another Skywalker or Kenobi or something like that, it's making it a very small universe it again. It's make, it's making it so tiny. It is, but and she is. She obviously has some link to the Force, some very yeah. strong link because she has seen that island before. She has seen that tree before. She has seen those books before. Yeah. So there has to be something there. The oh, fact I, that, I mean, yeah. The fact that they didn't explain it in this movie is one of the reasons I think why people are pissed off. And the other thing is, it's the second act. Yes, it you're is. not going to reveal everything and tell you everything. It's it's like it's the second act is always the downer act, even in a book, isn't it? You know, you got your third act, so they're not going to give you everything. And then, what's the third film going to be about? Well, I mean, this is the one thing that I thought. I find refreshing about this movie is when we went in from The Force Awakens to this movie, we sort of had an idea of what was going to happen. Yeah. Before we saw any any trailers, we knew that Ray and Luke were going to be together and possibly do mm. some training. Kylo Ren was was somehow going to be attacking the, the Resistance or the First Order was going to be attacking the Resistance. Snoke was going to be in there somewhere yeah. doing whatever and that... Poe and Finn were going to be together somehow, yeah. you know, doing something. Something. Now, you, you, I, well, I don't have any particular idea what is going to happen. No, it's it's quite refreshing. It is. It? I mean, Kylo Ren is is um, going to be the big bad now. I would assume he's he is the supreme chancellor or the supreme I mean, leader or pe- whatever they call have it. Spoken. Our friend Stu didn't he? He spoke about it in his review about Snoke being off so easily. I actually like that because I it was it was that was one of the shocks. For me, that was a massive shock that he suddenly was cut in half and there he was. Yeah, who was expecting that? We were all waiting to find out who he was. I mean, part of me still thinks there could be uh, he is a, still a puppet for somebody else. There could be. I mean, it... I mean that's one of the things that was a disappointment to me was we still don't know who Snoke was. 
what his agenda was, where he's come from. But we might still. Well, we might still, but it's going to be more of a throwaway. I mean, if he's that strong a, a, a Sith, could he not be something? Not if you, not if you're cut in half. I don't think. Can you still not be a Force ghost or whatever? Well, no, because you need to. Don't you? Need to, you need to give yourself to well, the Qui-Gon, Force, don't you? Qui Gon. Yeah, but do they have an alternate? I mean, I mean, I, Darth I, Plagueis bringing people back from the. I I just don't think we've heard the end of Snow. I think they purposely have done that for us to think. Oh, okay. I think I think he'll be back. But then that's then that's that is going down the Marvel route of people. Well, if people die, they're not really dead. I think they need to. Yeah, but w- that's the thing with Star Wars, though, isn't it? If people die, they're not always really dead. That's been from the outset. Yeah, but I think there has to be. There is a rule there, isn't it? That you sort of have to give yourself to the Force. I don't know. I mean, it's. It was it was the biggest shock of the whole movie yeah, it was because a shock. because no one was expecting that. So right, I, I want to try and have a bit of a sort of structure to yeah, this. Yeah, so, sorry. So we'll go through the characters and just tell us what you thought. Yeah. So, uh, Luke, Mark Hamill. Okay, what a performance! I mean, that's the first thing I'm going to bring into it. it. He had heart, emotion. He had the right amount of humor. Um, I like. I can't think of anything I didn't like. I mean. Let me think. Is there anything he did in this movie that I didn't like? I like the fact that he was grumpy. The way he discarded the lightsaber yep. was hilarious. Yeah. And was perfect. Yeah. Because he doesn't want any part of it. This no. is the whole thing. Exactly. I mean, it hinted that in the, the the trailer. He does not want it. He's been burnt. He's scared. Um, it's the way he said. He said, I came to this island to die. Yeah. That was the whole point of being there. Um, I Yeah. I, and I know that a couple of people sort of laughed when I put this on Facebook that he should. I think he should be nominated for an Oscar. I don't for, see why not for like best supporting actor. When you look at the emotion in his face, and I mean when he's come back as that projectile or whatever that is, excuse me, <coughs> whatever that is. So well, uh, uh, towards the end of the film, and I knew something was wrong because he looked different, didn't he? Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, those eyes in that, he almost looked evil. Well, when they did the the, the flashbacks, yeah, to, yeah, that that was they they like getting dark, back really yeah. dark under the eyes and stuff, yeah. Um, so when he came back and and was there, I mean, every part of that was just, yeah, there was there was there was emotion. There was if you look at his eyes, he was acting more with just his voice, wasn't he? In this, it, he he gave it all. And, he, yeah, brilliant. I, I've and were you shocked that he went off? And became. The... I, I wasn't shocked. I don't think. I don't think we've seen the last of Luke. I think he. No. I think he has given himself to the Force because he, again, he said the same sort of thing that Obi Wan Kenobi said to Darth Vader. Mm. He said to Kylo Ren. He said, "If you strike me down, I'll be with you all, you know, forever, you know, just like your father." And I think that we'll see him in Episode Nine as a Force Ghost. I yeah, think. I, think I just so. think we will because he'll be there helping Ray. Because that was one of the brilliant scenes. I thought it was one. Yo- I wasn't expecting it. Yoda. Yeah. I, I absolutely think that was brilliant. Yeah, but that went in, came in for a lot of criticism. People saying that that they made Yoda look like Goofy and not look like Goofy, but mm. look and be like an oaf, which I didn't think that was no, not at all. Right at what all. they had done is gone back to him being a puppet. Yeah, which was really good. Which was really nice. Yeah, he got rid of the CGI Yoda. Yeah, that was really nice, and he took out the tree, and that was a shock. I was thinking it was going to be this all big temple, and it just. Now we'll get rid of that. Boom. Yeah. Off yeah. Goes. So what about Daisy Ridley? Um, uh, I, she's just improving, isn't she? Um, some some guy at work said to me, the one problem he had with this movie is he thought Daisy Ridley was wooden. And I said, seriously? Didn't see, I don't think wooden at all. I don't see any wooden in it. No. You know, she carried on. We, we've spoken about it before. At the end of um, Force Awakens is the look in her face. That turmoil that's mm. in her eyes mm. you can see it she had it again in this and that's not an easy portrayal to do um her character i i think sort of reminiscent of a young luke almost as well isn't it well i mean just to, so that we um cross on a couple of things um i'll talk about Ky- kylo ren as well because right. i think i think they're arcs are sort of running parallel they are aren't they yeah because only on light and and dark, dark. and it's the scene in Snoke's throne room, I yeah, think you want to call yeah, it, yeah. or or whatever, where those arcs and almost like crossing over and then be becoming conjoined and, and almost linked forever. And 
that was what I found fascinating. The fact that Kylo Ren was teetering on the brink of doing the right thing. Yeah. To the point where he actually killed. Now I was having a. Um, oh, I'm, I think I'm in, still in the middle of a little bit of a backwards and forwards with Stu because um, he gave a load of points about yeah, what yeah. he hated and what he didn't like, and he was saying about he couldn't understand why Snoke didn't see what Kylo Ren did to him coming. But on the second and third viewings, if you listen to what Snoke is saying, because he's telling Kylo Ren what he's yeah. what what to do. And Kylo Ren does exactly what Snoke asks him to do, but he doesn't say, you know, and then you will kill Ray. Uh, Ray. He says you will strike down your enemy, which is exactly what he does because yeah. at that moment Snoke is his enemy and he kills his enemy. So he wasn't clouding anything in That'd his mind. This is where I need when I watch it again. Yeah, I'll pick up on these. Those sort are the sort of things you'll pick up. But then at that point, that's the point that then um, Kylo Ren then becomes a typical dark side or typical Sith in the fact that he wants to take over the, the, yeah. the you know the universe or the galaxy. And I think that was a great bit of acting when cuz cuz Ray says no don't don't do this mm. Ben you know don't go down this path don't go go this way. And then that's when those paths slide off again and then they they are going to fight. But we talk about um um Ray and Kylo together those scenes when they're <laughs> the four scenes where they're sort of talking to each other, aren't they? Mm. Whatever room, it's just the performances, especially Adam Driver. He's another one. That... Well, he was he was fantastic. I thought he was so good. Yeah, because he, he he didn't have, he couldn't rely on having the helmet this no. time, which I thought was really really good. Um, he's a great actor anyway. Yes, he he's not your usual Hollywood. He's quite buff though, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, that was that was quite a funny bit yeah. you know in in regards to um you know i can see the the criticism of of every time there is like a somber moment and they sort of intercut it with a joke i can sort of see the criticism mm. in that but at the same time i think star wars has done that from the very first movie yeah. they've always had those little moments of levity and and stuff um anyway so Poe Dameron, uh, Oscar Isaac. It was Isaac. nice to see him do a little bit more. I thought he was great. Yeah, and he's seen, he's a cad, isn't he? He's going to be. He's he is taking over the Han Solo mantle, is. isn't it? That's he what is. it is. Yeah, it's I, the fact that his answer to everything is to just blow shit up. Yeah, that's that's just his answer to everything. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah. You can't. Yeah, I, I, no issues. He's he's a great performer anyway, an actor anyway, isn't he? Oscar Isaac. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just trying to think. Is there anything that annoyed me when I first watched it. Not that I can see with Poe Dameron. I no. love his relationship with BB-8. Yeah, yeah. they got a really sweet relationship. Um, the scenes when they're flying, especially at the beginning when he's in the new jet that's got the super speed and it, what, what, the X-Wing, I just think looked stunning. Didn't and the thing that, that I read, because someone online, I think they tweeted Ryan Johnson, or Ryan Johnson put it up on there, that said that, well, somebody had said to him, well, nobody says... Um, I've got a bad feeling about this in the whole of the movie. Right. And he said, no, somebody does. In fact, the first beeps that you hear BB-8 say apparently is translated as, I've got a bad feeling oh, about really? this. Because then Poe says to him, come on, buddy, happy beeps here, happy beeps. And that's what, uh, and then Princess Leia or General Leia then says on the intercom thing, mm. um, you know, I think I, I side with BB-8 on what he just said. So it is said in there, but, oh, right. it's, but it's in, it's in BB-8 language. Well, that's yeah. quite smart. That's quite a wicked way of doing it's it. It's a clever way of doing it, yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, they're just really good, aren't they? Okay, so Leia, um, Carrie Fisher. Oh, it's a lovely performance from her. And to see her get to do more, it's a fitting tribute, isn't it? Like we said, the the, uh, the only criticism is the floating bit, but that's not down to her, is it? That's No. You know, that's whatever decision was made in the board and the director but performance wise brilliant isn't she forget how good an actress she was Sweet. It, it's quite emotional thinking about it that we've got no more Leia isn't it that's what um, you know Carrie Fisher it's quite emotional that mm. we thought. but when I came out of the film I couldn't stop thinking about her Um, was there any tr anything in her performance you didn't like or anything she not really like? I mean I couldn't um but that's why I think it was so long. Another, a lot of people were criticising the length. I didn't have an issue with the length as long as I was entertained, and that flew by for me when I was watching it. 
Um, it's because they they fleshed out the characters a lot more. You know, Finn got a lot more to do. We'll come on to him in a minute. Leia was doing more. Poe Dameron was doing more. Ray was doing more. And you've got Luke doing more. And everybody's doing more. And you've got to give them time to build and do these things. And if you don't, then, you know, they're just going to become... Like we said about um, Phasma, you, you know, what well, a waste that was. I still think it was a little bit of a waste. It, it was, was, absolutely. But um, right, So we'll do John Boyega and Kelly Marie Tran, who was uh, Yeah, Rose. I love them. I love them two together. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought Rose was lovely. I thought she, she was brilliant. really, she, really nice. Yeah. Just, Such a sweet character. And you sort of side with her, don't you? A bit like Finn, isn't it? It's the female sort of alternate of mm. Finn. It's, you side with them. they got a lot of spunk in them. and uh, Yeah. And all that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, That I, took me out of it when Snoke said that word. Oh, right. Yeah, because yeah, he said said to Ray, when he said, oh, and, you, and, and spunk. And I... For all you American listeners, spunk means something completely different yeah. in England. Look it up. <laughs> than it does in America. It does. So you talk about, you know, Disney film. <laughs> yeah, and it's full of spunk. It's full of spunk. Um, uh, yeah. I, but the, let's talk about their little arc when they go to the casino. Now, did you have a problem with the casino? Because a lot of people seem to think it could be cut out altogether. Well, to me, it it reminded me of the Rathtar scene in The Force Awakens. Right. They could have lifted that whole scene out find another way for Ray, uh, for Finn and for Rose to meet uh, Benicio Del Toro's yeah. character and got rid of that whole... But it didn't It didn't do anything for me, that scene. Right. Um, it was a bit of fun. I just... It was I a, mean, it was yeah, it was fun. a bit of fun, but all they're doing is, is they, they let those horse things yeah. out and they're riding on them. But that was a bit of backstory to her, wasn't it? So where she came from and... Yeah, but then again, that makes it seem very small and contained in the mm. fact that Maybe. the one place they have to go to do that is a place that she's got a, a, an issue didn't with. It, I, I mean, I just enjoyed it. I didn't. It didn't have an issue with any of that scene a bit. It it seemed to me oh, that it was good laughs in there. Yeah, there were good some good laughs, but it seemed to me it was the the reason they had that scene was so they had another kind of cantina scene that they could have a load of weird. Aliens right. and creatures in well, they're there. They're always going to do that, though. But yeah, they? I know. But that's that's what I mean. Is that that seems to be the reason that, that there was no the same as the Rathtar scene. Mm. They could have found another way for Han. I mean, well, what was that's when they went off on the Millennium Falcon, I suppose. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that's the the one chunk of a scene that because it was an introduction to Benicio del Toro, wasn't it? I I don't think we've seen the last of him either. Pretty no, certain. We I don't, well. I don't, I don't know because that was um, that was one of the disappointments for me. Was it? Yeah, because it didn't. Apart from his very strange reading of the character and doing the uh, the stutter that he had yeah. and stuff, and there are times when he looks like a an old Brad Pitt. He just looks yeah. like a sort of Brad Pitt from Seven, but with darker hair. Um, I, I don't know. There was something about the character that. That they they if they'd have had, well it, look put it this way if they'd have got rid of that whole Canto bite scene and had more where they had a bit more development of his character, I might have warmed to his character right. more. Or if he had been something from, say, Rebels or a, a character that you already knew, I might have warmed to him a bit more. Right. But the fact that come the end of it, all he did was just traded in the Rebels and that information. It, it didn't quite work for me. Do you think that's it, though? Possibly. Has he got his own agenda, do you think? Because no, that's the way I felt at the end of it. I just think he's just somebody that, that he, he is like a Han Solo s- smuggler, uh, scoundrel kind of guy that is just going from getting money from this, some way to another way. The first, the first thing when I was having the discussion after I watched it, that's the first thing I thought is, well, that's not the end of it for me with him. I reckon he'll be in episode nine. <coughs> do you think so? Yeah. I do. Uh, no, I can't. I, th- that's only after my first view, and I may change my mind when I go and watch it again. I, I really might. Likewise with that whole scene. But as I said, I was in the moment. I was so excited to see... Well, you probably saw I was so yeah. excited to get to the cinema and see that after the radio show that it just washed over me and loved it all. I was yeah. just like, wow, 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 wow. So what bits in it um, didn't work for you? 
Is there anything on there that? Well, didn't I need work? to watch it again before I start getting too critical. Um, the bits that didn't work for me were um, there was the floating bit, which took me a while to twig into that. You know, layer float. I wasn't particularly happy with it. It didn't look great. Um, at the moment, there's not a great deal. Phasma. That was another disappointment. I was hoping to see more, and it yeah. was just a, a wasted. Star Wars notoriously are bad with their villains, but with Phasma, they seem... But then that's two movies that they've totally, I think, bought, balls up Phasma. Yeah. Because, all right, she had a little bit to do here, but the the, the fight scene was... Not as good not, as it looked like it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Now, one thing I will say about the trailers is that there wasn't very much in the trailers that wasn't in the movie. No, you didn't notice too much, did there you? There was, I think the one bit that I can remember was um, Ray running on Acto with the lightsaber. She was like running at full power. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but that bit wasn't in there. Um, I can't really think of much else. You'd notice better than me after seeing it three times. Yeah, whereas... yeah. No, I can't think of anything that wasn't there. Um... Yeah, Phasma was a bit of a waste. Um, <laughs> that bit with Maz made me laugh. I couldn't quite get what was going on. Yeah, but again, that was just complete exposition. Did, yeah, it? it was It was exposition. That annoyed me a little bit. I was hoping we'd actually see her again. Yeah. Because I, like, I like her in The Force Awakens. She's a an interesting character. And the other thing that did annoy me a little bit was R2. It was a little bit... I want to see more R2. Yeah, but I think it's it's. I do feel that they are moving those characters yeah, out of the way. But and... especially when Luke was back, I thought we'd have saw. I know they interacted and everything. I just thought thought there'd be a little bit more. Yeah. I loved the 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 beam from the new a new hope. Yeah, that was a nice little. That touch. was a really nice touch. But I was just hoping they'd have a bit more. Yeah, interaction. I think that and so the, the the bits that worked for you because I, I, the the one bit that I loved was like say the hand the the, the Luke and Leia. Right from the moment, oh, yeah, when, yeah. right from the moment when Luke is walking in, um, sick, can't you? Yeah. I really my one little tinge of of something when she, when he goes and says and puts his hand on C three PO and then goes outside. I really thought that was going to be the moment when he was going to maybe just like crush one of those attacks. Yeah, I thought something or, like that. Was you know, coming. he was really going to do something that you know that I was I was watching the uh, Red Letter Media guys had their. Um, uh, reaction and review, yeah. Um, just as we before we started uh, recording, and they were saying, and I didn't, it didn't really stick with me until they said, but at no point in the Last Jedi do two lightsabers touch. Because right. even when Kylo Ren and Luke are fighting, they never actually smash lightsabers together. Right. So uh, that was the one thing is that there wasn't a good lightsaber no, fight. Right. Or didn't really notice did because Ray and. Kylo Ren didn't do anything. No, really. they were fighting the Praetorian yeah, Guards, yeah. weren't they? That was a cool scene. That, that was, was a cool, cool scene. scene. Yeah, I just think that it it was a chance really for Luke to really kick ass. But at the same time, his whole point of being there and doing that was to give the rebels and the resistance time to escape. Escape. It wasn't there. He wasn't there to actually fight no. Kylo Ren. He was there to stall, to stall him. So it it made sense in that point of view. And again, there were. I love I I love parts in in good movies where they set up a certain piece of dialogue. Mm. Uh, what I mean by that is when Ray and Luke were talking earlier on, and when Luke says to Ray, "What is the Force?" and she said, "Oh, it's what the Jedi use to like mind control yeah, and yeah. to and, and to make things. and make things float." Yeah, and he said, "That's amazing." And he said, "Every word in that sentence was wrong." And then there's a callback later on because Kylo Ren says something to him, and he says. That's amazing. Every word in that sentence was wrong. I love oh, those. I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah, he says it to him. At this, you know. Oh, I didn't notice that at all. I think she, because, no, that's right, because he says something like, you know, that the resistance is finished and, I, you know, the Jedi will let, will end and I will, I will kill her and I will do this and I will mm. do that. And then it was that little bit of a montage where he says the, you know, you, everything in that sentence was wrong. He said, you know, the rebel has been born, reborn today and it showed the rebels and it said, and, and I, when I'm gone, I, you know, I won't be the last Jedi. Mm. And I, that was a really, really great moment. That was really fantastic. So, I mean, it was a great scene. It was, it was a really cool scene, but I think it could have been a million, million times better if 
they'd given the chance for for Luke to really kick ass and really yeah, yeah. Rip, I was, rip things apart. I mean, that was the one thing afterwards I thought, well, hang on, that's a, a missed opportunity. I did think that, but it, again, it. I really got to watch it again. I you know, do. I you really. Do. I, I need to dissect it more. I was, I was just so into it watching it. I I've urged loads. so many people that have gone online. I've not. And they said they didn't like it. I've said to them I, pretty much word for word every time. I said I respect what you say, but go and see it again. Mm. Even to even to my brother. Yeah. I said G- make sure you go and as quickly as you can go and see it again. And I'd love to know how they feel seeing it a second time. Mm. Because I think the first time, like I was, it's washing over you, and you sort of think, "Oh my god, what?" I'm taking it all in, and you're trying to watch every little bit. There's a there was a bit right at the end that I missed the first time, right? When they they go to those little kids, yeah. And it was only the second time that I saw it that uh, that little kid goes outside, and it's the last shot of the film, and he goes outside and looks out up up into the stars. Did you notice that he used the force to for the uh, brush to go in his hand? No. I didn't the first time. And he stood on the yeah. steps and he puts his hand out and the brush or the broom or whatever it is he's got in it um, like goes into his hand. He doesn't grab the grab it. All right. It just flies no, into I his hand. That. Then he goes out and then he looks up into the, at the stars and he sort of lifts the broom up like it's a lightsaber. And then the music starts. Never noticed it the first time. So more Jedi are coming then, aren't they? <coughs> well, I think it's this thing that there are people around. And he has the the rebel ring on. I saw, yeah, I noticed that. That there are people all around the the, the galaxy that will side with the rebels. Mm. So I think that's probably what this next movie is going to be about. Um, another thing that somebody at work complained about, and I didn't really give it much thought, and I don't still don't really have a problem with it, is when they're, they're out running the big ship, and they're saying, "Why don't they just blow them up?" People were saying to me at work. It's because they were too. F- they, they, they weren't. They they weren't, weren't in distant. range. That's what I said. They were yeah. just out of range. So and their their cannon fire, or whatever it is, couldn't penetrate their shields. Mm. But then, as soon as they ran out of uh, petrol, I was going to say, ran out of fuel, fuel, the shield wouldn't work, and then they would. They could just pick them off. That was that was the thing with that. It's nice to see Adrian Evans. Yes, it? again, I never noticed him. First of all. Did not, you not? not? Not the very first scene that he was in. Oh, it threw me straight away. I was like, oh, hello. Yeah. But then the second time, I thought, oh, that's Adrian Edwards. I remember he was in it, and I couldn't remember what he was. General Hux as well. Domino Gleason, I thought, oh, yeah. was, was really good. He is he's good, he's yeah. almost like Comet Relief, though. He's he is almost now. Like... When Poe Dameron is talking to him on the loudspeaker, yeah. pretending that you can't hear, that was, a, that was that funny. That I thought was quite funny. Yeah. Um, but I thought he was, he had a lot more to do. I just want to quickly go through a couple of um, tweets that we had. So, at Stu underscore the which is our stew. He gave us a one-sentence t- review. Uh, most divisive Star Wars movie since Phantom Menace, change of, all, uh, of direction that won't work for all, and glosses over many plot points from The Force Awakens, and in the capitals, too much dumb humour, is what he put. And at Brian underscore leather, put loved it, a new beginning, I think. Yeah, that's, I'm with Brian on that one. Yeah, I agree with that. We've gone way, way over the We have, we better start wrapping it up. Um, I am going to watch it again. I'm still going to stick with my 4.5. Yeah, mine's gone up zone. to 4.5. I'm going to go 4.5 now. But I, I actually think it's going to go down as a bit more of a classic. The other thing I just want to quickly say, with a lot of people that I've spoken to and the way they've talked, they had their minds set up, like I spoke about before, of what was going to happen in The Last Jedi and everything. But what they've done, and I think they took heed of what people said about The Force Awakens, that it was just beat by beat, it was a, a new hope. The way people have talked, if they'd have copied what a lot of people, the critics, were saying that didn't like it, you know, the dismissers, it would have just become beat by beat, The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. And they have changed it, and they've done things that are brave to make it different. You've got a, an independent director like Ryan Johnson, who's obviously, and you can tell he's a huge Star Wars fan, but wants to expand the universe and make it huge. And and uh, bringing all these sort of independent ideologies into a movie and brave choices, that it is taking it in such a new direction. And that's the first thing I noticed when I watched it afterwards. Well, I think it's it, this feels almost like it's a, a bit of a reboot. Mm. And it, because now... The, the, there's what twelve a dozen of the rebels left. That's it, and yeah. they've got to try and find. I and mean, there's no major bad, you know, apart from Kylo Ren, and that we know about. That we know about, and it is sort of wide open. The story mm. is wide open. So, 
JJ, over to you. Yeah, absolutely. And that that just brings us. I I a lot of the the answers that I think people were looking for in this movie, we still might find some of them out. I.e., your you know your Snoke and. Oh, I'm sure. You, yeah, I'm sure. Ray, and it, you know, I think you're going to find it all out. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you it's will. It's the second act. Yeah. Let's not forget it's the second act, and yeah, it's not going to give you everything you want. But yeah. So now on to uh, Han Solo. Somebody on a, a podcast I was listening to today said said that Ron Howard must be shitting himself at home. You see, in all these negative comments about Ryan Johnson yeah. in episode eight, and you must be thinking, Christ, what they're going to say about us in May. But there have, you go. Have faith in Ryan Johnson, guys. I, don't, yeah, I think, don't give up on if it. If you take anything out of this, it's it's if you've seen it once, go and see it again. But it it, it doesn't matter. If you don't like it, it's not the no. end of the world. It it doesn't you matter. You can't take because... away that it's not a very well directed film. It's not a great you know, it is. It's such oh, I loved it. I think Ryan Johnson's the man the way forward. Him and JJ together can bring a but let us know. Yeah, yeah let do us, please let, let us, us know. know. Um, send us a, a comment or email us pancast at live dot com. If you do comment, don't forget to uh, press the like button when you do leave a comment. Indeed, and come and subscribe to the podcast. Just go to Apple Podcasts and uh, put in that's no moon. Come and subscribe. Come and leave us a lovely review and a five star rating. That would be wonderful. And uh, yeah, we've been we've been chatting on to far too long now. Yeah. So uh, that is enough for uh, this week's episode of That's No Moon. And this year. And um, this year, indeed. So, uh, have a lovely Christmas, everyone. Yes, and have a happy New Year. We'll we will see. see you in January for uh, what I would assume we'll have the the trailer for Han Solo. We must have. It's going to be close. I would have thought. It's got to be coming soon. Hasn't it's got to be it? coming soon. So, so anyway, we'll see you when we get back and I will have watched The Last Jedi the second time by then. Wonderful. Thank you all and we'll see you all again. May the force be with you all. Way.